Welcome to Market Man Training One. My name is Chrissy and I'm a member of the customer success team. Today, I'm gonna to be guiding you through the backbone of your Market Man account setup. We'll cover user management, suppliers, categories, storage areas, and inventory item setup. Let's get started. Once you log into your Market Man account, you'll be greeted with the Market Man dashboard. This is a snapshot of all your different reports and analytics within Market Man. We'll dive into this deeper in training four. First, let's start by going over user management. By clicking the settings dropdown, we'll click manage users. Here, you'll be able to add additional users into the Market Man system. This will be everyone from your employees, front of house, back of house, chefs, servers, or managers. To add a user, click the green add button and fill in the basic info from name, password, email address, and most importantly, user type. Employee user type will have a limited permission. This will be solely for taking inventory counts or logging waste, where managers will have the ability to view all reports and make changes. Once you add all of your users, let's head into our suppliers. By clicking the suppliers dropdown, we'll click into suppliers here. Some of your suppliers have likely been already uploaded by your onboarding team, but additional suppliers can be added anytime by clicking the green add button. We'll also want to add the details of each supplier. Clicking into the supplier's name, we'll go ahead and add a default category. For example, this is a brewery in which I order my beer, so my default category is beer. I may have a bakery in which I get my baked goods, a deli, or a specific supplier in which I purchase all of my produce. We can set this high level default category here, but it can go into greater detail on the item level later. If you're placing orders through Market Man for this supplier, we'll want to go ahead and make sure it's checked for orders. If you are not placing orders through Market Man, that's okay. We'll just go ahead and click not for orders. If you are placing orders, we'll want to go ahead and add the rep's email address, their phone number, and any customer information you may have, such as a customer number or a minimum order requirement. You also can CC your own staff or additional members at the supplier. We can also add our delivery dates and cutoff times here as well. For example, I know this supplier delivers on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and I have a cutoff time of Friday evening at 3 p.m. The need to orders checkbox here will send me a reminder before this cutoff time to make sure that I am placing that order. You'll wanna go ahead and repeat this process for setup of every single one of your suppliers. Once your suppliers have been set up, let's head into the categories section of Market Man. Under the suppliers dropdown, we'll click categories. Categories are a high level way of organizing your items. For example, alcohol, beer, different beverages or cocktails, you can get as high level or as detailed as you like with all of your different categories here. To add a category, we'll just click this green add button here. Once you've added your categories, now let's head into our storage areas. We'll head over to the inventory dropdown and click storage areas. Storage areas are the physical locations in which you keep your items. This is going to be places like your walk-in cooler, your freezer, your dry storage, or for example, the bar or the basement, any additional storage areas you may have. You can again get as detailed as you'd like on your storage areas. This is going to be extremely helpful for taking your inventory counts. So I suggest adding as many storage areas as you have within your restaurant. Again, just by clicking this green add button, we can add initial storage areas. Lastly, we'll go over our inventory items. Under the inventory dropdown, we'll click into our items. Inventory items are the backbone of Market Man and what holds all of our data together. We can search for items, filter by categories, filter by suppliers, or even filter by our storage areas as well. These items have likely been uploaded by your onboarding specialists, but we will always be adding new items to the system. Let's start by clicking into one of our items. For example, my 16 ounce cups. Up top, we'll start with the item name, and then we have our category dropdown. Now, if we have the default category from our supplier, that's what we'll default here. But again, we can get as detailed as we'd like with those different categories. 
for example, my paper goods. We now have our purchasing and inventory section. This is going to have all the details of the supplier in which the item comes from, product code, packaging, sizing, and the price. If we purchase this item from different suppliers, but it's all the same type of cup, we can categorize them under the different purchase options here as well. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. Next, we have our storage areas. This is going to be important for inventory counting. As you can see, my cups are kept in a bunch of different spots within my restaurant. Feel free to add as many different storage areas as you'd like here for where you store these items. We can click into any one of these inventory items to get into the full detail page. Let's take a look at my Aperol. Up top, I'll see the item name, and then I have my category fields here. This may be a default, but I can update it at any point. Now we have our purchasing and inventory section. This is going to break down the supplier, the product name, product code, and the unit of ordering and packaging information, along with the price. Under this dropdown, you'll see this entire breakdown. If you purchase this item from different suppliers, you can always add additional purchase options, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. We'll also want to add this to a storage area. Storage areas can be places like the back bar, back storage room, bar. You could add multiple different storage areas based on where you keep this item. Next, we'll also want to make sure that there's a count option. For example, my bottle of Aperol, I only account in the 750 milliliter. I don't count it in individual milliliters, so I'll just leave that pack of 750 here. We also have an advanced item definition, which will be used for recipes. For example, in my recipes, I do keep this in milliliters, but if I needed to change it into ounces or fluid ounces, I can always adjust that as well. You can also bulk update items at any time. This is super helpful when managing your inventory and setup. For example, we can click the checkboxes here, click the actions button in bulk update, and assign a category in bulk or storage areas. There's a few different options here to choose from to bulk assign your items. We can also merge items this way as well. For example, my Aperol, I purchased from both Cisco and Brian's Liquor. I don't want to merge these two items together because I treat them the same even though I purchase them from different suppliers. By clicking the checkboxes, I'll head back up to that actions button, bulk update, and merge these two items. Lastly, let's go over managing new items. We know your inventory is always changing. Suppliers are constantly changing as well. So you may see new items pop into the system from your invoices. Any new item that is scanned into the system from your invoices will be notified here. By clicking the Manage New Item button, you'll be able to see what that new item was, who the supplier was, and all of the details, including the invoice in which it came from. This may be an item already in the system, just with a new supplier. So in that case, we'll go ahead and add it to an existing, which will be merging that item. But if this truly is a new item, we can always accept it or edit it by adding a category or storage area as well. Now we've covered the basic setup of your market man account. Training two will cover ordering, receiving, counting, and waste management. Thanks so much.